right. I like to have this text used in this demonic thought in mind to be continued. All to right. To be continued. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, Lord, for being our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To be continued. During my time of relaxation and reflection, one of the things that I enjoy doing is watching movies. I enjoy, during my time of relaxation, catching up on old television shows. All right. I enjoy movies and old television shows. It, it helps me to relax and unwind. Yeah. I enjoy television shows, I enjoy more specifically types of movies or television shows that would be categorized as trilogies. Yeah. Those movies that have multiple parts to them. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the trilogy of The Hangover, mm -hmm. part one, two, and three. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I like the Fast and Furious trilogy. Mm -hmm. I've watched all seven of them. <laughs> One thing that I have noticed while watching different movie trilogies, specifically trilogies, those movies who have a continuous, a continuous plot, if you will, yeah. is that at the end of each movie, there is a statement, a phrase, that sometimes appears that they use to be continued. That's right. It denotes the fact that even though this is the end of this particular episode, mm. of this particular movie, there is more on the way. Mm. And as I reflected upon that theme, that, that thought that comes across at the end of these trilogy movies, these series of sitcoms, mm. There's one thing that I've noticed about that phrase, to be continued. Well. That phrase, without shadow of doubt, could be applied to this journey we call life. Yes, sir. For without shadow of doubt, our life is, when you view it from the sense of a theater production, could be viewed as a trilogy, if you will. Yeah. Could be viewed as a series, if you will. Yeah. Because life has a unique way that whenever you think you're at the end of one piece of life, Come on, there's man. something else that picks up. Yeah. I'm not just speaking this morning of the sense of bad happenings or valley moments. I'm not just speaking this morning from the sense of bad dilemmas and craziness happening in life. Yeah. But from the time you were born up until the time that our Savior decides to call us into our eternal resting place, our life is constantly moving. Yeah. Or should I suggest it should be constantly flowing. This is not just true with sitcoms and, and trilogies. It's not just true with our everyday life. But I contend that it should be applied as well to our Christian journey. Yes, this sir. is what the Apostle Paul was trying to teach the church at Colossae, that ultimately our Christian experience is, has not just stopped with one section. That our Christian experience should not simply end with one episode. But our Christian walk is a continuous journey if we continue to desire to be better men and women of God. Yes, sir. Tiptoe with me through the text, and I'll give you what the Apostle Paul is suggesting this morning that the Lord would like for all of us to receive on this great Lord's day. It is the Apostle Paul who finds himself in a Roman prison. And while he finds himself in a Roman prison, prison, the Apostle Paul received a visit one day from a preacher friend by the name of Emperors. Well, the Apostle Paul receives a visit one day from a preacher friend by the name 
of emperors, and emperors desires to visit Paul to inform the apostle of what is happening with this young church in Colossae. Well, for emperors, my brothers and sisters, is one of the main leaders of the Colossian church. Yeah. Emperors, if you will, is one who has been teaching and preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ to the Christians in Colossians. All right. And as Paul is in prison, as Emperor comes to visit Paul, he informs Paul of not what was just good in the church, but he informs Paul of some issues that were happening in the Colossian church. Yeah. For Emperor wanted Paul to understand that the Colossian church was doing very well. However, there were some false teachers who are attempting to enter the Colossian church and alter the manner in which Paul had instructed the body of Christ to declare the riches of the kingdom. Yes, sir. And I suggest, my brothers and my sisters, that even in 2019, Everest is not the only person that could testify about that dilemma. Yeah. For if you were to survey the land from east to west, from north to south, from far and near, you would be able to see somewhere along the journey there are individuals who like to add their own flair, is what they were calling it, yeah. to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. There are some who would still attempt to add their own opinion to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. But here Paul reminds Everest that the gospel message needs no one's addition and it needs anyone's subtraction. That the right. gospel of Jesus Christ needs no one's putting in and it needs no one's taking out. That's right. What the Lord has done for us should be preached with no fear of contradiction That's right. and with no opinions of our own, but just simply telling the truth about Jesus. Yes, sir. And so the apostle Paul begins to lift his pen, pull out his pad, and write this letter, this epistle, if you will, to the church at Colossians mm. to help emperors and all of those in the church of Colossians understand what Jesus has come here to do and as a church what they in turn should be doing. Are you still with me? It yes. is Empress who tells Paul, and Paul responds to Empress with this letter, and the letter, my Christian friends, helps to undergird all Christians in Colossians, and I contend that if you and I were to lift this letter up and apply it to our own Christian journey, it would help each and every last one of us as well. For the Apostle Paul thinks it not robbery to open this epistle, this letter, if you will, with thanksgiving as he so oftentimes does, telling this church of Colossians how excited he was, how pleased he was, how happy and exuberant he was that they have decided uh, to talk about Jesus. Yeah. Because anytime someone makes the decision to live their life for Jesus, you are sometimes be happy about it. That's right. You ought to get excited about it when your neighbor gives their life to Christ. You ought to get excited about it when your friend get along in church. You ought to be excited when your family members surrender their life to Jesus. Paul was excited that the church of Colossians had began to talk about Jesus. And he says that he's thanking God for them and for all that they have done. Paul writes to remind them of should always be Christ-centered. It is debated by many theologians uh, that the book of Colossians, this letter to the Colossian church, uh, is one of the top letters uh, uh, because Paul speaks the most about Jesus Christ in this Colossians letter. All right. Yes, he speaks about Jesus to the church of Ephesus. He speaks about Jesus to the church of Philippi. He speaks about Jesus to the Galatian church. However, this church of Colossians, uh, uh, Paul speaks the most uh, about Jesus Christ. Uh, well, because he wants them to know without shadow doubt uh, that they should never allow lofty words. They 
leadership never allowed the philosophies of others to shift what Jesus Christ has come to do and what Jesus Christ has said about our journey. Yeah, yeah. It is the Apostle Paul who continues this letter with lifting that there is hope in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Paul reminds them that all that we do should ultimately be centered around Christ Jesus. All right. What I love here is found in the second chapter of Colossians when Paul begins to tell them that he has suffered so long for the gospel to be preached. That he has fought so hard for the gospel to be preached. And he wants them to know that just because he is that they are saved yeah. does not mean that they should stop right there at their salvation. Yeah. He wants them to know that just because they got saved does not mean that they should stop right there at salvation. I'm going to say it again. Yeah, yeah. He wants them to know that just because they are saved does not mean they should stop right there at their salvation. 
Oscar. When you get saved, that's episode one. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. But every day of your life, you want to continue to work. So that when you go to bed at night, guess what you want to write in your mind? To be continued. Yeah. When you go to bed at night, you want to put it in your spirit. To be continued. Because when you wake up the next day, you want to recognize that the series picks right back up when it left off. Oh, and some of us have got so comfortable with simply being saved. Let me tell you that that's Right. 
Yeah. Oftentimes, in other words, we see where that metaphor of being anchored, rooted and grounded, if you will, is being compared to a good Christian. Check the song where the song says, when you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water, wind can blow and you ain't got to worry about wind shaking you up. All right. Because you are rooted and grounded. In other words, you are anchored. Yeah. And what Paul wants the Colossian church to know is that if you want to follow Christ, you got to be rooted so that in turns you can be anchored. The church says, Just to see 